I'm Scott Brown with Green Wind and other home energies. And welcome to part three of the ceiling fan wind turbine class. Help Monkey, you sit up there in this front seat where I can keep an eye on you. Mudman RV was kind enough to send us this picture of his old unit that he fixed up a while back so we could use it. Today we have a little theory and hopefully this will comprise all of the theory for this video series. Notice the magnets around the stator towards the top of the stator. He has half inch square by eighth inch magnets. These magnets close the air gap between the magnets and the stator by one half. When you close the gap by half, the magnetic flux is about four times stronger, so closing the gap is more important than using more magnet. Setting a ring behind the magnets for the magnetic flux to travel easier helps to use less magnets and increase the flow of magnetic flux. Just like the flow of electricity, magnetism needs to flow in a full circular path to work well. Uh, forgetting about the coils on the inside for now, we notice that there are only seven coils on the outside. Seven is an odd number. Magnets have two poles. That's an even number. What you're looking at is 14 poles on the outside. Seven poles where the coils are and seven where the stator lobes are between the coils. These coils are fat, and they're all wound in the same direction. The reason for that is there's only so much room for wire between the stator lobes. So they put off all the windings on one coil instead of half on each on two different coils. If a machine wound it, it would have to wind all 14 coils, but it would have to change direction on each coil. This is one single wire on the outside here and until it gets around to the two wires that go down the middle of the tube uh, or the uh, center pipe and come out to where you connect. Then the other two set of wires that come up that tube go to the inner set of coils. What we have here is a perfect sine wave. There's the first 90 degrees, 180 degrees, 270 degrees, and 360 degrees. On the stator there are four lobes beginning from the beginning of one coil to the beginning of the next coil. Each lobe represents 190 degree square on this chart. Okay here we show two sine waves, one for the outer coil and one for the inner coil. Notice they are 90 degrees out of phase. Notice the red and the blue. The red represents north and the blue represents south. There's 180 degrees and basically this is how the magnets affect the sine wave. You could look at the magnets and say, oh, they're over these coils right there. Now we look at this top sine wave, that's the outer one, and the blue one, that's the inner one. And we put these two together, you can see the difference between the two sine waves at 90 degrees, and that's noted in green. Now a diode bridge rectifier turns the negative half of these two waves into the positive. It makes it look like the bottom, it doesn't have a negative half at all. I'm still showing two sine waves on the bottom, that's why I still have the green between the two phases, because both of these coils have been through diode bridge rectifiers, but they still have two separate outputs. Now after we join the two terminals of each diode bridge rectifier, either in series or in parallel, we have a two-wire DC wave that has a ripple at the top of it. This ripple on the top of the wave, shown at the bottom, is called DC ripple and it is at 77 percent or more at any given time. Now if you take your mouse and pause the video here for a minute you can look at this chart and start at the top and work your way down to the bottom reviewing everything that we just went over. It'll help you to retain it. Okay I went to the paint board here and I painted in some magnets there, red being north end of the magnet and blue being the south end of the magnet. We got the north over all the coils and south over all the lobes between the coils. And if we draw some yellow arrows, we'll find out that uh, two of those lobes push uh, magnetism right through the middle of the coil and out to the uh, south end of the magnets uh, through the lobes that are in between the coils. If we rotate it 90 degrees, we notice that we're doing the same thing, but that's to the inner coils. We're going to add the magnet ring on the outside of this next one, showing you the full circle on the next phase and that's going to the outer coils but it's in the negative direction and finally notice on the fourth quarter of the wave we have the arrows showing the flux going in a negative direction through the inner coils 
Now these arrows are running flux in a circular path through the induction ring or the uh, magnet ring on the outside of the magnets. What this does, you notice the arrows are going through one magnet to the uh, magnet ring and back out the other magnet. This is like stacking two magnets, making each of these magnets twice as strong. So if your magnet ring isn't all that thick, it's not conducting the magnetic flux of the two magnets uh, very well. Therefore, you're not getting the full power of your magnets. Okay, we're coming to one of the last three pictures in this uh, theory session. Um, we're all going to work on a different sealant fan later, and some of us have a different sealant fan to start off with. Some of these sealant fans will have six wires. That's because the speed control is done differently on them. Um, on ours, we have a capacitor system. We'll get to that in a minute. This top coil up here is like seven of, um, all seven of the outer ring pushed together and shown as one continuous wire with a primary start and a primary finish. And also the inside coil is the same thing. It'll have a primary start and a primary finish and a secondary start and a secondary finish. So there's only four wires on it. Easy to ohm out and figure out. On the second one, at the bottom, you'll notice you got a secondary start, first tap, second tap, and secondary finish. Uh, between the secondary start and first tap would be low power, and start and second tap would be medium, and start and finish would be full power. And it's also uh, connected with a capacitor to put it 90 degrees out of phase to the second coil. That may, uh, through the magnet ring, tells it which direction to pull. If you reverse any of the two wires, you wind up changing the phasing, and it pulls in the other direction. Okay, on our second picture here, I went ahead and put the readings in that I got off one of the other ceiling fans on the ohms. Uh, turn your meter to ohms, which is the omega symbol on there, and you start touching wires and getting your readings out there, but don't hold it with your two hands. you got to clip one of the wires with a clip or something, or it's going to be measuring the ohms between your hands and your rest of your body. Uh, set it on about the 200 ohm scale. If you'll see down here at the bottom the secondary start and it has 28 ohms to the first tap and then uh, from the first tap to the second tap is 27 ohms. From the second tap to the finish you're looking at 36 ohms. And I got the other measurements in there and it all totals up to 91 ohms no matter how you look at it and add it up. So 91 ohms when you find that one uh, it's from the start to the finish and that's the two wires that you're looking for the two taps you don't need you need to cut them off if you use one of the other ceiling fans okay this last picture shows how our ceiling fan works um, just to the left of center you'll see uh, a box it's got two sets of parallel lines the one on the left is a little bit smaller and the one on the right is a little bit bigger these are capacitors and uh, that's that dual capacitor that we pulled out now the switch switches to the one on the left or the one on the right or puts both of them in parallel to act like it's an even bigger one and this is what changes uh, the phase or how much current goes into that secondary coil and that's how uh, the speed control is taken care of if you swap any of the two uh, windings uh, if you swap the uh, polarity of any of the two windings they'll go in the opposite direction but we're not worried about that we're treating these two coils here as two separate generators running through diode bridge rectifiers and then coupling it down to, uh, by the way we hook the the outputs of the diode bridge rectifiers into two wires and sending it down to the battery which is the voltage regulator and from there we can use our power anyway I'm Scott Brown with Green Wind and other home energies thank you and many good things to you and yours Thank you.